<laughs> Welcome to Pono today. Uh, we have this event every third Thursday at Nomea Hawaii. And the reason why I created Pono today was because I wanted people to have a venue or a place to come to and to also view on our Pono Today Facebook page or our website. And sometimes things happen in our lives and we need a refresher to stay in our aloha, in our Pono, in our excellence, and in our love. And today's guest speaker is Daniel Aifa with the Aifa Project. I actually found him on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've only met, this is only our second meeting. Second meeting, yeah. <laughs> But he was so aloha, and everything that I read and kept up with on his on his website was just so pono, and I wanted to be able to incorporate more of the physical part of staying pono as well as how it does affect the mind, body, and spirit. And um, I think that it's a huge part of everyday life that people don't always take for granted. And um, with not saying too much yeah. <laughs> already. Uh, Daniel also has a book out called Aloha to You. You can also get an ebook on his website, The IPA Project. So check out The IPA Project. And um, thank you for coming. Well, thank you. And I'll let you go. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, first off, thank you to Leanne for just. Uh, you know, get contacting me and you know, giving me this opportunity to kind of tell my story of what I do and you know what I believe in, um, what creates a cool body. You know, uh, but first uh, I would like to just uh, kind of make this talk pono first. Um, so uh, I just want to pay my honor and respects to Keakua for this great day, this great night, and for everything and everyone who is under the moon and the stars and the sun. Um, to our ancestors and our loved ones who aren't here today, but are waiting for us to reunite with them on the other side. Uh, as well as to Nakupuna, my family and everything, thank you for being here and my friends for being here for their guidance. And to everybody else, even whoever, whoever else is inside the book, bookstore <laughs> who can listen, hear my voice, you know, thank you for coming as well. I know they're listening still. Um, but yes, uh, my name is Daniel Martin Mahino Manulani, uh, and tonight I can call myself Mahino Manulani. Um, I was born on a night where it was a full moon. The moon is shining bright in the clear skies, and uh, a big bird flew over our, our house. And that was when, at that moment, my mom went to labor. Well, you'd think that would be all great and everything, but no, I gave her a heart attack. I uh, came out with five times around my neck, her umbilical cord, all black and blue. So it wasn't very the, a great beginning, you know, already. But at the same time, she gave me the name Mahina Manalani, which means the messenger. Um, and that's what I am, simply a messenger. You know, for my age, I have lots of respect for the elders, Nakupuna, and I look to them for my wisdom and my learning. So when I was asked to talk tonight, I was kind of like, oh, wow. Like, I'm telling what I think and what my beliefs and what I feel is right, what's Pono. So as a messenger, I'm just gonna share stories. you know. And with my stories, I trust that you, like our ancestors, will take from those stories and put it into your own. Because I believe that with one story to one person is another story. But one story to many people is many stories. It's all about how you perceive it and what you take from it. So, like I said, I'm here to empower you all to build a cool body. Now, what is a cool body? Well, let me share a couple quick stories for you. I remember I was four years old when I was riding my tricycle around in the driveway, around the circles, around the circles. And finally, I felt I could go off the edge and try something different. And back then we had a dirt driveway that led down to our next door neighbor's house. So I decided I would feel adventurous and go onto that dirt road. Cause there's rocks, there's bumps and everything. So I go onto that driveway and I ride it down, all the way down to the end. And there was my uncle Stanley with his white mustache, white hair slicked back, white undershirt and blue khaki pants with his boots on. 
And I just remember seeing him with a barbell on the ground with weights filled all over it. And he doesn't even see that I'm there, but I'm stopped. And I'm watching him. And then all of a sudden I see him pick this weight off from the ground to his chest and then grunt and press above his head. And he presses, brings it out to his chest and back down to the ground. And I sat there and I was like, wow, that's cool. You know? So everybody say cool. Cool. Cool, you know? Then I remember one night, just like many nights, we were on a patio with my family, and my dad's telling those stories about King Kamameha and his warrior friend, Kekuha Pio, and about all the escapades they went on and all the battles and wars and the training they did. But one story that stood out to me the most was when King Kamameha turned over the Naha stone. I remember hearing the story, and he was mentioning how the people around him, as he walked up to the stone, became fearful. They were afraid. They saw the fire come a flame into his eyes. His eyes turned red. And as he bent down to the ground to grab the Naha stone, the earth started to tremble and his body started to grow. And everybody became even more afraid. But he flipped that stone over and he became who he is known now, you know, King Kamehameha. And to me, I thought that was cool. Ooh. All right, there you go. But then, <laughs> yeah, good. See, you're already going to first step. But then, so that was more like I was like, wow, that's that was like that's some strong people. You know, they have bodies that could withstand a lot of things. Then I think about another person, a strong woman named Queen Little Kalani, being in prison in her own palace. Um, during the time, she wasn't allowed any papers, no visitors, and nothing. All she was given was a pencil and a paper. And during that time, she wrote probably one of the most beautiful chants and songs out there. You know? And to me, that was a strong woman itself. And to me, I thought that was, wow, that's cool. That's cool. And then next thing I think about, too, is that you know, the men in service, the men and women in service, I think mm -hmm. about them a lot. Because it's, it's a lot to sacrifice, going out there for your community, to save people, help people out. I think about my brother Isaiah, you know, he decided to become a fireman. I was like, wow, I could be a fireman one day. You know, I, I think I could do that. Then he comes and tells me all the stories and all the different things they have to go through and the things they see. And I think to myself, I could not do that. You know, that's not, I, that's just not what I could do. So for him to be out there and protecting the community, protecting people, I think that's cool. cool. <laughs> you know? And then, Next to anything, that's why wow, those, those people are very mentally strong, you know. They give up their time to help others, but at the same time, it's a challenging thing they have to do. But as long as they stay mentally strong, they're cool. Then I think about my parents, you know, always opening up the house to our family, friends, and everybody else, no matter what, I was feeding them. I remember growing up, all my friends called it Hotel Aipa. <laughs> They always wanted to come over to our house just because they knew in the morning time they would have omelet, fried rice, spam, Portuguese sausage all ready for them before they even wake up. So, you know, for them to be able to be so open and so loving for everybody, I thought that was cool, you know. And then lastly, I think about my papa. Um, you know, my papa passed away in 2001. And I remember I was still young. I was probably 13 or 14. Can't do the math really quick, but um, I remember just everybody paying their respects, walking in, walking in. And finally, the minister comes up and said, all right, we need to start the, the ceremony. You know, it's run, we're running a little late. So I was kind of like, oh, okay. But then as I look behind, I see that the line was still out the door. And the church was still packed. And there's people all outside the doors, just there to pay their respects. And I was like, wow. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. So tonight, I'm gonna to share with how to be cool and how to build a cool body. Because in order to build a cool body, I think it's, to build a cool body, it's continuous effort to building, being strong mentally, physically, and spiritually. It's not just one thing. You can't have, sometimes many of us focus on one or two things, but forget about the other. And that's when we get like, what we call, my uncle Anna says, a flat tire. You know, you have all this stuff going on, but you fo focus on only one thing more than the other, 
you know, you kind of lose sight of what, what, what you could be doing, making a difference. So I hope tonight I inspire you to think about your own lives through my stories that I tell you. Moving on. There's three things that I want to talk tonight. Three simple, quick things I want to talk tonight. One is building your mana. Two is aloha to you. And three is ola kino, which is keeping your body healthy. Okay. I always like to start from the inside out. So of course, we're gonna start with your mana, building up your mana. Now, going back and forth between California and Hawaii for the past 10 years, I felt a disconnection every single time. It's kind of a wave up and down, up and down, up and down. Whenever I come back home, I feel my batteries recharged. I feel more alive, feel more inspired. And then I go back to California, I'm riding that wave, but all of a sudden that wave just kind of crumbles, crumbles slowly, because I find myself back down the bottom again. I go back home, it comes back up. It's like the, the tides, in and out, in and out. And then finally, one year, I was invited to become part of Pa Holo, which is a Hawaiian martial arts lua for bone breaking, but also at the same time, it's about healing, both spiritually, physically, and mentally. So I was lucky enough to be a part of that and do a workshop where I had to learn about what it means to be part of Pa Holo. And there was this ha'a we had to do, and it was called a maha'u. And during this maha'u, we're told that we have, we're paying homage to Kamapua. And we have to, in the beginning, we breathe, ha, he, hu. And we have to bathe ourselves and transform ourselves into Kamapua, into that boar. And remember that one day we're going over and over, nonstop, nonstop. We're drenched in sweat. I'm not getting black and blue from hitting our arms so much. And our alohe, Eli Mitchell, is saying, no, that's not the maha'u. And there's 20 of us. Um, no matter how many times we get louder and louder and louder, still, no, that's not the maha'u. Finally, you could tell he's getting a little frustrated with us, so he makes us sit down. So we sit down. And then finally, he calls up the senior class, the, one who are, the ones who are already in Pakuiaholo, who are helping us through this whole workshop. And there's probably less than half of them than compared to us. So we're sitting there, I'm already upset because I'm getting frustrated that we're not being good enough and we probably did it about six times and I'm all black and blue and I'm just like, I'm doing the maha'u, you know? <laughs> I'm doing it, you know, <laughs> look at me. Then all of a sudden, I see, I think there's about, I remember there's about eight, my brother being one of them. And I hear, a two. And everybody's take a big breath. <sighs> and right there, right when I heard that simple breath, I started to get chicken skin already. You know, I was just like, whoa, okay, this is, this, is, this is a little different than what I was doing. So then, next thing you know it, I hear moko moko, and they go into the moko moko stance. And I was like, all right, now the hair in the back of my neck is standing up. I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is different. And then they did the maha'u. And talk about mana being hit, being hit in the face by mana. I felt so much mana just from eight guys. And in front of my eyes, I saw them transform into Kamapua. And I was just like, whoa, that's cool, <laughs> you know? So the next thing I know it, from that moment, I was like, okay, I get, I get what Olohe is saying. Mana. So what is mana? You know, mana can be inherited through our ancestors over time over the lineage, and mana can be acquired over experiences, especially life experiences. The challenges we have, the successes and the failures, you can build up mana through those. And I remember at one point, after I joined Pa Kuiaholo, I left to go back to California for a longer period of time. And that moment, I kind of lost myself a little more. I got really focused on work, learning how to be a strength coach. That's at that time when I was became an assistant strength coach at a university. So I was, I was pretty much infatuated with the idea of research and learning from books. So I, even my wife would be like, yeah, he, would, he always read books. He was always reading an article nonstop, 24 seven. He just inside reading books, either reading a book or in the gym working out. And he didn't like to read. Yeah, and I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, as, yeah, exactly. The story is I didn't like to read, but all of a sudden now I have all these books in my li library that I've read. So now I'm the bigger reader. But, uh, but it's so funny though, because during that time, I kind of felt myself distant, my, distant from, from everybody else. I felt distant from my, from my wife at that time because I was just so focused on that one thing. And remember when I said building a cool body is about growing all aspects of life, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Well, at that moment, I was definitely working on my physical because I was working on every day, learning about everything that needs to be done to improving athletic performance. So I was like, I got this. But then I was missing a big, huge part. And that's where I was missing the money. And it wasn't until I went back home and my brother was kind of like, hey, are you going to go and you know, come to Lua class? I was like, ah, I don't know. You know I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm only here for two weeks and I got to go back to California. So the first Thursday comes, no, I don't go. Second Thursday go, finally he asked me again, are you going to go? You're leaving you know, pretty soon, are you going to come? And I tell him, no, nah, I'm not going to go. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not ready to go back. And I remember one on the flight back, I was on the plane, and I was kind of thinking to myself, what am I doing? You know, here I am from Hawaii. I love everything about Hawaii. I was born and raised in such a strong Hawaiian cultural family. My mom teaching hula, my dad also being part of pa, a pa. You know, um, we grew up speaking Hawaiian to each other, or at least like greeting each other. Uh, we've done blessings, we've done all that stuff. And on the flight home, I was kind of, I found that I was losing my culture. Because I don't believe we can lose it. Like, physically, we, we can't lose it. It's in our blood, it's in our DNA. But we have to learn how to tap into it. And that's where the mana account comes in, you know? And that, this mana account was taught to me by another Olohe, Thomas Kalukukui, who said that, you know, your mana account is just like a bank account. You know, you acquire mana through your life challenges, your successes and failures. And as you acquire it, you build more. The more you have, you know, the more influence you can have on the others. And the more influence you have, the more possibilities of showing aloha to the masses. So I took that and I started to think about, all right, so how can I find out how much mana I have? And at that point, I already knew I had a lot of mana just from being a part of a family that was so loving and so strong and so caring. I was like, all right, I have this mana. And then I started to look through the, my, my life and seeing the successes and failures. And I was like, all right, I have a good amount of money, but how can I get to it? So that's when Lua came in. I just remember just the simple breathing of the ha, he, hu, I felt mana. Just from hearing a two in my own mind and taking a deep breath and excelling, I could feel my mana build back up. And every once in a while, I could just sit back, close my eyes, and I would envision myself doing the maha u, the way it's supposed to be. And I open my eyes and I'm a new person. And I was like, wow, okay, I can do this. You know, I can bring in the culture, I can tap into it whenever you want. Because sometimes, especially in Hawaii, I think many people lose sight of it. They forget, they get so built up with a lot of negativity, a lot of just life itself, but they don't forget to look towards nature because that's where all the answers are. You know, just by seeing the mountain brings me energy. Just by seeing the ocean, jumping into the ocean, I feel, everybody feels great. You know, when you get out of the ocean, you, you just feel alive. And that's a sign itself that mana can be found everywhere. And the more mana you have, the bigger the influence you can make. And the big, more difference you can make in people's lives. So that's what leads to aloha. Okay, because of the more mana you have, the, I believe the higher the mana you are, the higher the leader you can be, the bigger, the, the more difference you can make. But it also starts with Aloha, especially my book, Aloha to You. I was, I was writing my book, the Aloha to You, and I was reading through it. It kind of clicked into my head because I was really unsure what exactly my biggest note was. You know, what, what was I trying to do? My wife asked, so what do you want people to get out of this book? And I was like, you know what? We always talk about giving aloha, give, give, give. But sometimes I say that you can't always give aloha. You really have to think about giving aloha to yourself. It's about aloha to you first. Before you give aloha to this person, that person, you gotta look within yourself and make sure you have aloha in you. You can't give something you don't have. 
It's like it's very hard to be sad when you're happy, you know, or to hate while you have love, or vice versa. It's very hard to do those things, or to frown when you're still happy because that frown turns right upside down, you know. <laughs> but so I figured, wow, that's that's what that's what I want people to know from my book is that it doesn't start with what's outside of you. It starts with what's inside of you. And this was kind of towards my personal journey through life of just kind of looking be, um, in my past and what has affected me. You know, like I mentioned, I, I, I was born giving my mom a heart attack, you know, umbilical cord wrapped around my neck, black and blue. But at the same time, I was also born with a partially, partially deaf. So being partially deaf, which pretty much made me have a speech disorder, made me go into speech therapy for about seven years. So over those seven years of my early life, you know, it was very hard to communicate with, with especially my peers. Um, they looked at me a lot differently, especially. Um, they spoke to me differently. Even some of the older people, the parents, looked at me differently, especially when I would try and talk to their kids and I couldn't enunciate the, my voice, you know? I couldn't, I couldn't talk to them, I couldn't communicate, communicate. So it frustrated me, but at the same time, it created a lot of feelings that came upon me, such as being called names, that you're not very smart, you're kind of dumb, like all those, all those names kind of came into me. And you know, the, the lucky part of it is that I had such a caring family, so I balanced it out. But those types of words still take a lot of toll on a younger person, or an older person, anybody. Negativity is a very strong thing, you know? You have to have a, a lot more positive but it's that one negative can just bring you down really quick. So over a period of time, I kind of started to believe that I was those things, that I wasn't very smart, uh, that I wasn't gonna do much, that I would never be able to communicate, but huh, look at where I am today, you know? <laughs> I'm talking, you know? <laughs> so, but it's, uh, it was very interesting. I remember in second grade where all I had to do was read two lines of a scripture in front of the school during a school mass. And I went into the podium and it was as if I was graduating already. My mom was there, my, my grandparents were there, my, my speech therapist was there, everybody was there. My doctor, ear doctor, everybody was there. <laughs> and it was just two lines. And I said those two lines, which probably still sounded horrible. But after I walked off that, that stage, it was as if I graduated or like won the Nobel Peace Prize because they're like <laughs> clapping, they're crying. I was just like, Wow, that, like, you know, to have that kind of a support was huge for me. It helped me a lot throughout my growing up years. But at the same time, you only spend so much time with them, but you spend a lot more time with your peers. So those times still had a huge effect. Um, in seventh grade at Iolani, I have a good friend Jared over here from Iolani too. But in seventh grade, we, we were told to write a letter to ourselves and that we'll open up our senior year. Now, I totally forgot about that letter. I had no idea. I, d I don't think I even opened it up. I left it because I was just like, I didn't want to look at it. My senior year, I was like, I didn't want to look at what I even thought or even wrote. <laughs> and then one day after I get home, I'm going through a photo album that I never even knew existed that my mom made for me for high school. And it has all my high school pictures. And here's this letter. And I was like, what is this letter doing here? I thought I, like, I thought I got rid of it, but for some reason, mom found it. You know, it's probably pulled out of the trash can. But it was so interesting that when I finally, you know, at that moment, I felt that I was mentally prepared. Um, and I opened that letter and I was kind of taken back. I actually started to cry a little bit <laughs> because just to see how far, what I thought of myself during that time. You know, I said that I don't belong anywhere. Like, I'm so dumb, you'll never, you never graduate, you never do this, you never be anything. And I was just like, oh my, wow, where does this, like who is this person? I was really surprised at, that I even thought that way about myself. That all those things that people told me that I actually believed. And that is where I found that in order to be aloha, to give aloha, you have to have aloha for yourself. And that's when I started to realize that, you know, all those things that people thought of me are, from the outside, you know? I'm a big believer that your, your inner world affects your outer world. And your outer world also affects your inner world. But as strong as your inner world can be, you can make the outer world seem like roses, you know? 
That's why aloha is so important to take care of your body. Which leads to the next thing, your body, okay? So now you have all this mana. You have all this mana, all this influence you have, you're a big time leader. And you have all this aloha for yourself, which makes you even have more mana. And now you have this body that you have as a messenger. Cause that's what we are. We're, the souls are in our bodies. Our bodies are just a mes messenger. And that's what I am, a messenger. So that's why when I work out, that's my strength point. When it comes to being physically cool, I'm like, yeah, I can do that. You know, that, that is second nature to me. That is what I do for a living. I was a strength conditioning coach for four years at a university. I trained hundreds of athletes. I wrote personal training programs for hundreds of clients. I've done athletic programs for 21 sports every single year. So I was just like, I get this. I can take one person and make them amazing. That's what I felt, you know, physically. But then I, I realized that as strong as, our, as strong as our bodies can be, we forget about those other things. We forget about the mental and the spiritual aspect of things. So what I'm trying to say is that when we are so mana, so aloha, there's an the other side. There are those who forget about their bodies, forget about how important their health is. Because you have all this mana, all this aloha, which you can affect millions. But if you don't take care of your health, that time that you have is short-lived. You can't do what you are meant to do, you know? We're all here for a certain reason, and it's to make a difference. I believe we're all here to make a difference, not to sit comfortably, but to actually make a difference. Um, so that's where your body comes in. Now, everyone says, oh, Daniel, that's so easy for you because you're constantly working out. You're always working out. You know, you do this competition, you're doing that, you're, you're training this way, you want to do this. I was like, yes, but it takes a lot of work still. You know, I see working out for me is like a spiritual event, you know. I tell my wife, I tell everybody, is when I'm, when I'm in the gym, it's it's pretty much me time, you know. It's my aloha to me. It's my gift I give to myself that I can be amongst what the the weight room because that's what I enjoy doing, you know. Now everybody's also oh, you have to in order to build a cool body you have to lift weights, and I tell them no, you don't have to lift weights. That's what I choose to do. I, that's the way I build my cool body, you know. And then we have some other, other Paul brothers who are, you know, they're bigger guys. And they're like, you know, we don't feel, we don't really like the whole lifting the weights. And he said, but we like to work on our, in our yards. We like to work in the low E. We like to pound poi. We like to, you know, we like to work with the hands. I was like, that is it. You know, that's all you have to do. Just be active. For me, it seems so simple when it comes to building a physically cool body. But whenever I talk to others, they get really kind of taken back by how simple I make it because they see it so difficult. But I'm more like, if you want to be active, be active. Jump into the ocean, as simple as that. You don't have to worry about the cardio. You don't have to worry about lifting weights. You don't have to worry about the yoga. If that's not what you want to do, then don't do it, but do something. You know, I told a, a woman who I was personal training one time, and she came into a gym saying that she did not like to lift weights. And I was like, well, why did you come and join the gym? You know, <laughs> why are you here? Well, she said that she didn't know what else to do. So I was like, well, have you gone hiking? I haven't gone hiking. I haven't done that. I, I love to hike. My, my husband hikes all the time. He's a, he rides bike all the time, but I can't do it. I said, what if I told you that I can, I can get you to do that stuff that you want to do, but I, these, these are the tools that I do have to get you there. And she's like, oh, okay, okay, we'll give it a try, you know. From the first day I asked her, so what, what things do you not like to do? She's like, well, I don't like to do push-ups. I don't like to run. I don't like to do squats. My I don't really like to work on my legs. I was just kind of, well, then what do you, what, what, you're not giving me much here. <laughs> now, and that was the first time I met her, and already I was like, oh, this is going to be a long, long day. But I thought I, I it thought as a good challenge. And by the end of that workout, she, I made her run, I made her do push-ups, I made her work out her legs. And of course, the next day she called me up complaining how sore she was. <laughs> but 
she kept on coming and coming and coming over and over and over. Maybe because of my charmingness, I don't know what it was. Because <laughs> <laughs> she just kept on coming and coming. And then also she's like, okay, I think I'm done. I was like, all right. She's like, I'm gonna go on a hike up San Gregorio, which is the highest peak in Southern California. She's like, I'm gonna do that with my husband. I was like, all right, go for it. It's all, it's all you. She's like, and then I get a call that that night and it's her crying because she made it to the top. And then so she just wanted to, and what was awesome that I never trained her ever again because I told her that's where I was gonna get her to, to the top of the mountain. And she did. And then now she's, she rides her bike, she climbs, she hikes and everything. And you know, that's what it is. You have to find the tools that's necessary in order to get what you want. Um, and that's what being physical is about. It's not about the weights. It's not about all that stuff. It's whatever you choose to do. Like my dad, every morning I know he's watering the plants, raking the leaves, weeding the ground, but that's his way of being physical, you know, exercise. My mom dances hula. You know, that's, that's a workout in itself. I sweat just by dancing hula. So we all have something that we can do to be physically cool. So it's important that, especially when nutrition comes in, you know, especially in the magazines and all this stuff, there are so many different things out there. Eat this way, don't eat that, do this, do that, which makes it even more complicated for many people. And I wish I could go off all night about nutrition, about how simple nutrition can actually be and how everything else is just making it more confusing for those. But it's really important just to know that we all know that bad sugar, what bad food is. Okay, we, we can count on, we can just say it off, off our head. Fried chicken, fried this, fried that, you know. That's all bad stuff. We know that, but we still love it. You know, I love it. But as much as we love it, we have to also understand that it does take a toll on our body. You know, it does cause some sort of, sort of stress. You know, you become what you eat. That's what they say a lot. So if you eat something that's very high in fat or all that, so that makes you feel just weighed down, that's what happens to you. You start feeling weighted down, especially your motivation starts going down. Um, Leanne kind of talked about, I posted a, a blog post earlier and it was about motivation. And I'm trying to make it, as, make it as simple as possible when people say, I lose motivation, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. And I tell them that you just got to think about stress is what causes you to lose motivation. That's all it is. When you feel uninspired, unmotivated, it's stress. Simple as that. We have a tank that our body can only handle so much. Okay, so say that, for instance, take myself for, for an example. I work out a lot, like every day. And so my stress goes up pretty high. But it's not overflowing. Okay, but I make sure that I have the correct nutrition, the correct hydration for it to come back down to where I'm back to empty. Or maybe not too empty, but you know, back down. But when I was out in California and I was kind of upset at myself for not being where I want to be, especially when it comes to career wise, um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't mentally there because I was still having all those inner demons about that you, you can't do this, you know, you never get anywhere and all that stuff. So I had that on top of my working out a lot. So I was working out half full. Then I started to worry, stress about finances, stress about this, stress about that. All of a sudden it just started to overflow. And that's where I kind of hit my lowest point where I was just like, what am I doing? And that's what happens when people don't pay attention to be developing physically, mentally, and spiritually. You become, you overflow. You spill over basically. And then all of a sudden you just become down. And you can tell by the way we walk. Now, KU, what does KU stand for? You know, to me, KU stands for strength, power, sturdiness, firm, you know, stand tall. That's what KU to me is. is. So whenever I say KU, or whenever I hear the word KU, I always meant, oh, stand up, you know? Because the way we walk is a direct correlation to the way we feel about ourselves. You know, and I really thought about that. When I was young, I remember that I would always walk with my shoulders forward always looking down, always looking at the ground, dragging my feet. And I always remember hearing my dad, hey, shoulders back, chest up. It's like, oh, don't you know, exactly. Don't drag your slippers, <laughs> yeah, all this stuff. And I was just like, oh, 
So every once in a while, like I'll find myself when I'm in those times where I get frustrated myself. I'm just like not happy, and I start going. And now I said, I was here. Hey, and that's all I need to hear. And I'm oh, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> I'm cool. But that's those are the kind of things. You, whatever we do, we have. It's a constant learning process. It's constantly growing. You know, building a cool body for me is a lifelong journey. I'm never going to be able to actually build a cool body. I won't lo- know until the next life, until I've seen what I've done with this life. You know, until I see the difference. And hopefully, on the day, my last day, it's as full as my, my grandpa's. Because it was obviously to me that he made a difference in people's lives. Even if it was just as being a nice guy to them, or saying hello, or welcoming them to their home, or just cooking them a meal. You know, that, is a, that makes you your mana girl, your spiritual goal, and also your physical, you know? Because the better you feel about yourself, the more you can do, okay? And that's what building Kubari, I, I always challenge a lot of my athletes to be, hey, they're always complaining, coach, we're so tired, we're so, you know, this is so sore, you know? And I tell them, you can't grow without, with, while you're staying in the comfort zone. You have to go outside of the comfort zone and if you want to grow. If you want to get better, you have to do this. One of the hardest things I had to do, have to do before, was this asking a question. Like, I could not ask a stranger a question. I would have to get my mom to ask a question. As simple as, can I get my french fries? You know? <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's a simple question. And I could not do it. For all the way through high school, I could not ask a question. I could not go to a stranger and just ask them a simple question. Even to college, I had a hard time asking questions. I had to get my wife to ask, her, ask me my questions. But can you ask him? I don't want to ask him, you know. But it was because of my insecurities. You know, I still have those insecurities. I mean, a lot of us, a lot of my friends think like, wow, man, Daniel is always, he's always on. You know, he's always, he's always feeling cool. I was like, that's, I don't, it's, you know, it's impossible to always be cool, to always be on. You know, a great man that I followed, his name was Zig Ziglar, and he put it the best way, you know. You can't be on all the time. If you're on all the time, that means you're on something, you know? (laughs) That means you're on something, okay? But he said, but, so I like to put it, I like to be on 95% of the time, like like how you put it. 95% of the time, I'm on. But I give my 5% to feel down a little bit because it only makes you stronger when you pick yourself back up. But that's what building a cool body is all about. It's about constantly, continuously making yourself better and learning more about yourself because that's what life is all about. It's about learning, the more you learn about yourself, the more, dif- the bigger the difference you can make on other people. Because people get to see what you have done with your life and what you have accomplished and it inspires them and hopefully creates a ripple effect to affect the rest. So, thank you. Any questions or? I do. Oh, the mana part? Yeah. I recognize that mana is something that's inside of us, that inner strength, yeah. that gives us this energy. Right. And that loving yourself. Right. And when you talked about nutrition, I got this message that I should ask you for teenagers or people who are using energy drinks mm-hmm. or powder drinks to beef up that energy. Yeah. You know, which I personally think that it's causing a lot of, um, even to this day, I'm working on a 30 almost 30 year old um, kid, once a kid, person, but um, he had an aneurysm. And um, we have no evidence, but only now it's coming out that this diet pill that he was taking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I would like to get it out there to those kids. Oh yeah. You know, or people who are encouraged by those kind of things. And 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 that's also, you know, when it comes to, because we've all seen, especially my, the athletes that I've worked with, they always come by my office in California. They're like, Coach, what do you think about this? And sometimes it's a little bit, a little weird because it's just a bottle with a little label that says, get big, and that's it. <laughs> and I'll be asking them, where'd you get this from? Oh, this big guy in the gym gave this to me. and said, take it. It will get you big, you know? <laughs> and I was like, and I grab it from his hand, and I'm looking at it, and there's nothing. There's no ingredients, there's nothing. I'm just like, how, how long have you been taking this? So I've been taking it for about like three weeks now, 
and I just open it up and dump it out. And, and he's, he's, he got upset, but I was just like, you don't know what's in it. You know, you don't know what you're doing to your body. Now working as a, as a strength coach, we, did, we do use supplements. You know, we use the powders, we use the um, different types of powders. Um, I even recommend to some of my clients that it does help out, especially for those who are athletes and who are physical and who do work out a lot. You know, you kind of do need a little supplement if you're not taking care of it with your whole nutrition. Um, I'm a big fan of making sure that you have your nutrition down before you even start any powders or pills or any of that. Because once you're off those pills, all you have is a diet. Um, I've had many, um, the fat burner pill is one of the biggest ones that come out. The Oxy Elite, we've all heard about that. But just kind of, kind of talking about fat burners in general, what that does when you, because when, working in a, in a vitamin store, we have a lot of people looking for fat, fat burners. And I remember one, one individual come up to me and says, what does this do to your body? You know, what are these like, things that kind of, what happens? And instead of going to a scientific route and making them even more confused, I kind of just made it as simple as possible. You take this pill that suppresses your appetite, that burns your fat, that increases your core temperature, you know, basically causing a chemical imbalance in your body. Feeds your heart rate and all that stuff. Okay? Yes, while you're on the pill, you will lose weight, you will lose body fat and all that stuff. But you, your metabolism has gone up from its normal base. So it's on this ride, and that pill becomes more like a drug. And just like how any drug is, when you're after your drug, there's a big drop. So what I, I told this individual is like, so after you think about, after you take this pill, what are you going to do? And they're kind of like, uh, I don't know. And I said, I can tell you what's going to happen if you don't know. So you're going to gain double the weight back. And then uh, right there, they're, they're like, what? Wait, what? They were kind of, a, kind of confused even more. And I was just like, that's what's going to happen. Because your body is going to be looking for the stimulant, and it's not going to be there, which is going to cause a big dip in your body chemically. And that's where things go wrong. That's where you gain more weight. If you're not prepared to be, OK, I got to eat this way. I got to stay active. Because that's what is, there's no easy way. There's no quick way. You have, there's all about patience. Patience and perseverance. I remember I did, I did a competition, a bodybuilding competition, you know. And uh, I remember I kind of did this to myself. I made myself very, very unhealthy. It was kind of like one of that, um, that book called Fit to, uh, Fat to Fit or something like that. I kind of did that to myself. I ate as much food as I could, tried to get as big as possible, and I got the, probably the biggest I ever got. My wife called me a blob. I was just like, <laughs> thanks a lot. But... I was, you know. If you see the pictures online, you, I mean, they're everywhere. Just, just Google my name and you'll see it, you know. It's there. It's out there. But I, I made sure that, okay, now that I have this, you know, blob, <laughs> what am I going to do with it? And the best way to do it, I figured out, I'll get ready for a bodybuilding competition. And just to remind that during that time, we were out in New York, and uh, she was getting her master's at Cornell, and I was kind of like working as a bouncer, yeah, me a bouncer, right? <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, I couldn't spend money on all the, all the supplements that all those bodybuilders say that you should take and all those things you could do. So I had to rely on whole food sources as my main thing. And just from there, from my, I think before then, I was working in the fitness industry for about seven years by then. And just in that one year, I've learned more about nutrition in my body than all the seven years combined. Just from, the, just from being like, okay, what can I do with my body with just focusing on nutrition? And I was amazed. It was, it was a game changer for me because now I can turn it on and off. I know that I can do this. I know I can eat that. I know I can do this. If I do eat that, I can do this, you know, to balance it out. So, but those powders and everything, especially if you know people who are taking those powders, it's not the answer to all. It's, it's really just a supplement. You know, it's a supplement to the diet, which is the main thing. You know. Any other questions? What is like the, the best part about what you do? Like, what is the thing that every morning you're just like, wow, I really love what I do because of this? I was, uh, actually, I started off just working. I remember my dad asking me, so what are you, exact same question, what do you love doing? You know, if you could wake up in the morning, what could you do? And I remember telling him, if I could wake up every morning 
I wish I could just lift. You know, that's, that's what I thought initially. I just want to work out. I want to be paid to just work out, and that's it, you know. That's all I want to do. And I want to just wake up and open the door, and right when I open the door, there's a gym. Because I, I love being in the gym. I mean, they call me a gym rat, I am, but I just love it. But as time progressed, and I started to learn more about myself through the IPA project and writing and kind of going back into that, I realized that the thing that wakes me up every morning is, is being able to make a difference in someone's life. You know? Even if it's as small as have a great day. You, know? you can turn someone's day from being down on the ground to someone feeling great about themselves, but just by something so small. Especially when I, or if I help somebody out with the exercise and fitness and everything, and they feel better about themselves. That's, that's, what, that's what wakes me up every day, is being the possibilities of being able to have an effect and be able to influence others. And that's, that's what I feel that I'm here, is to make a difference in others' lives and to make a difference in the communities. And my way of doing it is by teaching them how to live a healthier and cool life. Uh, and that's the way I do. That's how I'm able to share it. Um, everybody has their own avenues, and this is just my way of doing it. Yeah. Um, I would like to know what was the magic words you got to that lady that even helped train. Oh, that's great. Like, to get her to, you know, I, you know, as a lonely, lonely therapist, I have some clients that continually I say, you gotta go, and I give them homework, you yeah. know? And it took the, this one client, like, at least two years to just get on a program, get started, mm -hmm. you know? I tried, well, I tried helping clear things off of her past, and it was always one excuse, yeah. you know, more excuses than, Oh, I think one of the most effective exercises I did with her was, I remember, I remember this day, it was, it was a hard workout, you know, it was, a, it was part of the, the program that I gave her, and she was kind of like getting upset with me for pushing her kind of hard, and she just wanted, she's, I'm, she's like, I'm done, you know, and she actually said, I pay you, you know, like, I'm done, like, I was like, <laughs> okay, so I, I kind of had to like, you know, bring down the, the situation a little bit. But then, actually, she's like, you know what, let's do this. So I sat her down in the office area that we were given. And I actually asked her, why are you here? You know? And then she just kind of like, she kind of cooled down herself. And I asked her, why are you here? She said, oh, well, I, w I need to become healthier. Why? Oh, because, you know, I'm overweight. Well, why do you need to become, why? I keep asking her, why, why, why? You know, because we all have the answers. It's just that we don't want to say it. But once we say it, you know, it's kind of like, okay, yeah. You kind of get all denial. And then finally, she said that, she, I, when I asked her, what's the purpose of being here? Why do, you, why do you pay me to train you, to exercise you? And then finally, I got her to say, because I want to play with my kids. I want to be able to go on hikes with my husband. I want to be able to do that. I want to be around long enough to see my daughter, you know, graduate. Because she was overweight. She had, she had heart problems. She had diabetes. She had all these things. And, but right when she found the purpose of why she's doing these exercises and why she's coming and paying me and over and over and, I, and, and I'm putting her through all this you know, challenges, but once she found that there was a bigger purpose and we wrote it down, I told her write it down. And she wrote it down. It's, and this, that by itself, she, came, she became a totally different person because she realized that every single workout, there was a purpose behind it. Now, and I think that's the probably the most important thing is that whatever we do, there has to be a purpose. It makes it much more you know, attainable for us because we see it, we, we can feel it. You know? If we're kind of just doing something like, when I ask a, a young man, why, why, why are you lifting weights? Oh, just because, you know, I just, I, just wanna, I just wanna do it. There has to be a purpose. Like, you know, it, like sometimes like a younger guy, oh, I, I like the chicks check me out this way. <laughs> hey, that's fine, you know, that, if that's what your purpose is, that's a, the that's a purpose, you know? Yeah, there's an incentive, you know? <laughs> He's just like, hey, it works, you know? But then you have other people who, who are like, I have a competition, I have, you know, there has to be some sort of purpose behind whatever you do, even if it's not physical. You know, if, you, if they go to Lomi Lomi, obviously they're coming to you because they're looking for something to, a purpose, you know? Yeah, I didn't make her write it down. Yeah. So there's a difference, I think, that me telling someone yeah. and then someone telling me. Yeah. 
pain. Yeah, because it, it, it makes them cool. realize that it is already there. It's just that they have to voice it out. Yeah. yeah. And 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 then she as she said she's never she's never thought about it that way, because she only thought about you know, the easy thing. Oh, because I'm I, I'm overweight. I have this. I have that. But when it comes down to the deeper meaning behind it, it made a bigger difference. So. I have a question for your parents. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I always say, that, you know, it's so nice to see such really great parents, you know, for um, and raising a family in Hawaii and practicing the Hawaiian culture into it in this Western way and just keeping both balanced out. Um, but the question I have for you is, what were those encouraging words that you gave Daniel when he came home from school and he was having those physical challenges that kept the peer pressure and all of that away from his stability, in, you know, stability him through? I guess on my side, signing so the sounding board for the boys when they come home. And I think if anything, it would just be, you know who you are. You know what to do the best. Stand up, don't be a wuss. <laughs> you know, it, it was always just giving them that support of, you know, telling them they know who they are and where they come from. And they always say, go big or go home and dig deep. Mm -hmm. You can dig deep, bro, you can do it. You know, just encouraging words, I think. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if they're acting silly and they can't figure it out, then see all those weeds out there. <laughs> <laughs> Lean on it. And then you tell me how bad you feel. <laughs> That's all <awesome>. to <laughs> <laughs> Get the mind off of it, right? Yeah. 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 Tell them another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's more reality. That's our style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It works. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have to hit any of them or, you know, be physically abusive. We just give them the eye and it's like, all right. So they just knew that. There's, there's bigger things out there than their feet. They never like the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good clean yard. <laughs> so that was so, it's so nice to like, share the stories. Yeah. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. As Leanne mentioned that, I did write a book, Aloha to You. It was an e-book, but then finally uh, I was lucky enough to be able to make it into a hard copy, which is pretty awesome because that's kind of been one of my dreams is to actually see something physical. Because ebook is like, oh, okay, that's an ebook, you know. It's, but nothing beats a hard, hard copy of a book. You know, and it was so funny because I had this uh, one of my followers on the Iper Project, um, she, she bought the book. And then I was like, oh, I, I, I messaged her back. I said, oh, thank you for buying. She said, okay, I'm waiting for it. I was like, oh no, so I sent her the link. I was like, oh, you just click the link and do it. And I get another email. Oh, I still haven't gotten my, my book. I was just like, oh. So I tell her, I was like, sorry, it's the ebook. And then all of a sudden, it's just the ebook with a question mark. So then I had to explain it to her and everything. So she was actually the one who, who inspired me to be like, you know what, I need to get a hard copy <laughs> because <laughs> I got to send it to her. Um, yeah, because it was so funny because I actually. Did, end up telling her, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. So I actually gave her her money back. I said, oh, give me money. She sent it back. She's like, no, take it. Here's a donation. So, oh, OK, thank you. <laughs> you know? But I told her that you know, when I do get a hard copy, and she saw that I did get one, finally have one, is that I'll be sending it to her and, uh, for free. Because you know, she's, been, she's been the one who's, when I started the IFER project, I started about three years ago. It was just a site. I started as kind of my, my own way of kind of putting my thoughts out there for myself, um, kind of journaling um, my, my thoughts about fitness, exercise, and then about life, it started, it started to just go on. But she was one of the first ones who started to support me on that site, started to share with her friends. And she was in Australia. And she was like, oh, I'm in Australia, and I follow you, and I love what you do. I, you know, I actually tell everybody in, in Australia, like, oh, aloha, and she just like, she keeps, she, and she works at a coffee shop. So she's been around for a long time, and she will send me emails and say, oh, I did this today, I did that today. You know, um, I'm trying your 30-day Aloha challenge, <laughs> and I'm doing it, and I'm just like, oh, it's like, I'm on day 25, and it's so, it's so fun, it's so interesting, you know, how this, uh, people are, are um, 
uh, interacting with her just by doing those small little things. You know, it's, it's just as simple as opening the door. You know, a lot of people forget about just open the doors for somebody else. You know, let them in, or saying thank you or saying please. It goes a long way, especially the thank you and please. I remember my my uh, parents would be always drop us off at a friend's house, and I would say, make sure you say th your pleases and thank yous. That's all. We, that's the first thing they say when we get back in the car. You say your please and thank yous. It's like yes. Uh, but I remember one time we were at an airport, and we all know how crazy the airports can get. And this man who I needed to get some answers from was there, and he was fumbling, fumbling. And finally, I just kind of told him, you know, no rush. Yeah, my flight's leaving soon, but don't rush. It's okay, you know, get, do your stuff. So he's okay, so you're doing that. I was like, yes, please, thank you, boom, boom. Constantly say thank you. And he just stops. He says, you know what? People don't do that anymore. People don't say thank yous. People don't say please. It's something so small, just like how I mentioned, like making a difference. How so that small thing of please and a thank you can do, you know. But I I texted her. I actually I sent her an email last week saying that I sent her a picture of this that I got it. Um, it will be available soon on Amazon right now. You know, as a start. Um, hopefully to get other places, but Amazon's a great way to start. Um, I'm excited to release it, you know, officially to be like, all right, it's out there, it's go, you know, it's go time. But I'm excited about it. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to create a something that is physical that you can put on the shelf, you know, with your name on it. Um, but what's that? Oh. <laughs> so, aloha to you is basically my my whole thing is about fitness and strength. So when they see it, like a strength coach is writing something like this. They get a little confused. Um, but in this book is my journey towards finding aloha for me. You know, and what, in this book, it's more of kind of giving you, like just like how I mentioned, your, my stories and how hopefully you take from my stories and making your own. You know, to take the stories such as, I mean, this opening it up, your mana account, like I mentioned, it's inside here. Um, Guidelines to be to be nalu, you know, to go with the flow, because I I believe that sometimes we just get all in a rush. You know, we always rushing, rushing, rushing. We get we forget things here, forget things. I sometimes I forget my glasses on my head, <laughs> you know, because I'm rushing. I'm trying to find something, but once you calm down and just be nalu and just go with you know the flow of the universe and flow of the ocean, you know, everything seems to just kind of be calm, be nalu. Just like when we're out in the ocean and there's a strong current taking you, no sense fight it. You gotta go with it. You know, obviously it's taking you a direction that you need to go. You know, but if you fight it, you're just gonna tire yourself out. And the next thing you know, you're whoever, wherever you are, you end up wherever you are. You know, so just be nalu. So those kind of things are gonna be followed found in here. Um, just of me looking within myself and finding stories of my past, stories of my present, and stories to come. You know, I share all that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>